Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is just a quick one to take a look at two new flight controllers from Holy Bro. We have their new Kakute H7 version 2 as well as the Kakute H7 Mini. Now in this video we're going to take a quick look at these flight controllers. I'll just walk you over the basic specs, give you an idea of what has actually changed. We won't be flying them today, they've literally just come in. What it's going to do more than anything is just give you an overview of what's available and we'll talk about their compatibility with some of the new digital systems on the market as well. Well, now, just before we jump in, I do want to say Holy Bro did send me these flight controllers for free. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published. It's not really a review, it's just an overview. However, I've not been paid for that, and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Anyway, let's take a look at the H7 version 2 first of all, and then we'll hop over to the Mini. So to start, we'll take a look at the new H7 version 2. Now, this is a 30.5 by 30.5 mounting pattern flight controller that features the STM32 H743. It uses the the BMI 270 IMU supports 128 megabytes of onboard flash storage, up to eight motor outputs via these two dedicated ports. It has a dedicated digital port for the likes of the DJI Digital FPV system, but also supports analog OSD as well with the chip located on the bottom. It has built-in barrow sensor, which is the BMP280. It has I2C ports, up to six UART ports, and it also has an ESP32 allowing for Bluetooth functionality on configuration with the SpeedyB app. The flight controller has a built-in back which supports 9 and 5 volts. On 5 volts it has up to 2 amp output max and on 9 volt it is 1.5 amp. Whilst that is going to be absolutely fine for the likes of the original DJI Digital FPV system with the air unit or Vista, you are going to need to be careful with the new O3 air unit and I would recommend powering it directly from VBAT if you're going to use it with this flight controller. Overall its dimensions are 35 by 35 and the flight controller itself weighs just 8 grams. Overall, the build quality of the flight controller looks really nice. It's nice to see also that they've used underfill on that H7 SoC, helping with the reliability in a crash. We have a USB-C port down the bottom here for updating our firmware. Connection to our ESC should be nice and straightforward via the dedicated ports. And again, as I said, with our digital setup, we have that dedicated port here too. If you're going to use it with analog though, you're going to have to use it with the pads. Just looking around the other side, obviously we've got our back, some additional circuitry, but overall everything looks absolutely spot on. Now they also, with the flight controller, include a bunch of cables, so you have everything here you need to get yourself up and running, as well as some nice rubber grommets to go into the flight controller, just to help with vibration isolation on the IMU as well. Next, moving over to that H743 Mini. Now this is a smaller version of that H743 with a 20x20 20 20 mounting pattern. It still features the STM32 H743. This time it has an upgraded black box flash of one gigabytes. It uses the BMP280 barometer, as I said before, still uses that BMI270 gyro if you've got the version I've got here, which is 1.3 or later. Six UARTs, up to eight motor outputs, although you've only got one motor port on this one. It does still have a dedicated digital VTX port as well. However, this model doesn't have BEX on board, so it's going to provide direct battery voltage to your VTX rather than it actually being through the back, which means you don't have to worry about anything with regards to the O3 compared to the other DJI systems. The size wise, the board is 30 by 31 and 6 mil and weighs just 5.5 grams, but it still has that analog OSD function on if you need it, if you're not going to use it with a digital system. Like the other board, we have a USB-C input for updating the firmware, and you can see you have the pads all the way around the sides for this one. It is a far more compact setup, but it still has all of that additional functionality we've seen before. Again, up to eight motor outputs, six UART ports, I2C ports, so again, it's going to offer all of that functionality you need, whether you want to use it with iNav, Betaflight, or any of the others. On the Holy Bro website for each of these boards, they have a really good overview of the pinouts for the boards as well as the configuration options as well. You can see here they walk you through all the components as well as the pad locations and exactly what the specifications are. And then further down they have wiring diagrams for connecting it up to the likes of DJI or HD0. You've got the installing receiver options, so showing you options for Crossfire or Tracer, Express, LRS, FR Sky. And they've just got a really nice overview showing you everything, including the beta flight configuration options as well to make sure you can get yourself set up without too many issues. 
Okay, now just popping the boards under the microscope just to give you a quick look at what the build quality is like before we wrap this one up. Now, I've had a look around these first of all before doing it on camera and I have to say everything looks absolutely spot on. No sign of tombstoning, all components look well soldered. As I've said, there you can see that underfill around that STM32H743 which should offer a bit of extra reliability. All the connections look good. As I said, all the components look fine. We've got our ESP32 here somewhere. There it is. Let me just spin it around. I think it's an 8285, actually. Yeah, yeah, ESP32. There we go. That's going to give us our Bluetooth functionality. And if I spin the board over then, we can see some additional components. But everything looks perfect. There's our OSD chip. All looking fine. I did did just see a regulator, 54335, same regulator as used in the DJI uh, Air unit. That's used to provide the main power for the main DJI Air unit. I've seen that one before. But overall, yeah, absolutely looks spot on. If we then move over to the Mini. On the Mini, again, very much the same. This one doesn't have that ESP32, so it doesn't have the Bluetooth. And it doesn't have that um, back on board either. But everything just looks good. Flipping it over to the main side of the PCB. There we can see the barrow. We've got that Winbond flash chip. All of the components look absolutely nicely done. No single, in fact, not a single sign of anything at all I'm concerned about. No solder balls. Board looks nicely finished. Looks like it's been cleaned and it does look like it's coated slightly as well. Now, when you pop these two flight controllers side by side, there really isn't a lot of functionality difference between them. The only real thing you're losing on the Mini is the built-in backs. Other than that, you have pretty much everything else that you get on the larger one and you get that additional black box storage as well. Overall, the quality looks really good. I look forward to getting these into builds and I just want to say a thank you to Holy Bro for sending these over. I'm going to be using them on the channel in the next couple of weeks and if you're interested in getting a set, I will put a link to them in the description. Anyway, that's pretty much it from me on this one. Stay safe. If you'd like to support the channel, please do consider checking out the link to Patreon in the description. Please do let me know what you think in the comments section and I will speak to you soon.